Got a Felton panel over two. Five Sierra nine two. Can you hear me over? I can hear you, Jova. Um, I think I just hit a child um, crossing next to the eleven and three quarter mile post, but I can't remember the name of it. It was a lovely day, early spring. In fact, one of the first nice days of the year. Normally, I wake him up. It takes me like an hour just to get him to leave his room. You know, but that's the daily struggle I have in the morning. He's quite charismatic, makes friends quite easily, and uh, he's quite complex. His name is Cristiano, but I call him Chris. Cristiano, and he's naughty, and you know, I think it's a mum thing. I was due at the time to run a train from Woking to Waterloo. He's got a really, really good heart. The only problem he has is his temper. Cristiano was playing basketball. He got into an altercation with another student, became very upset, and he left without permission. He just doesn't listen to anyone, and that's when he starts getting into trouble. Everything was fine. There was a train in front of me, so I was hanging back, keeps the distance between me and him. And without any warning, a child just literally appeared in front of me on the crossing. As fast as I could, I applied the emergency brake and immediately called for emergency assistance from the signaller. I think I just hit a child um, crossing next to the 11 and 3 quarter mile post. The crossing you've just gone over? He wandered out in front of me with his hands in his pockets. Right. But I think I hit him. Okay. Do you need me to go back and have a look, over? And in that moment, you're thinking, what's happened? Is the child dead? So I'm sitting there for a couple of minutes, waiting for permission to leave the train. And I could start hearing the emergency sirens coming. They came from three different directions. We had the helicopters. There's so much emergency services. You're just holding your breath, you know, praying, thinking, gosh, I hope that, you know, it's not what they think it is. It's not a pleasant thought knowing as you walk along what you might suddenly come across looking back at you. When the police called me, I was like, uh, what's going on? Something happened to Chris and they're not telling me. At that moment, you know, it just felt knots in my stomach. You know, your heart's beating. When something like that happens, if you're alive, you cannot move. You're just so shocked, you're frozen, and you feel like you feel like you're not there. We sat in the ambulance together and I just held his hand and I just said, oh, I'm so happy that you're okay. He said, Miss, I just blanked out. I don't know what's happened. He said, I just felt cold shivers running down me. I couldn't sleep at night. I kept thinking about it. It was just stuck in my head and I still think about it today. It traumatizes you and you live a bit your whole life. Wow. That was really, really close. Oh my God. Oh my. <sighs> Very lucky boy. Very lucky boy. I feel like he got another chance. Sorry. I don't know what else to say. It does make you realise how quickly something can go wrong. And if you had an opportunity to tell the driver something, what would you tell the driver? I want to catch up with him. I want to talk to him about it. Yeah, you know, I just want to say, like, I'm really sorry about it, about what I did, about how I was being so stupid. I want to get across to him. Have you learned your lesson? It is not worth skipping that 30 seconds and stepping in front of a train. It's just, it's not worth it.